Welcome to the Messy Medium Podcast. I'm your host, the Messy Medium herself, Tara Cecilia. I'm a tea connoisseur, intuitive psychic medium, and a lifestyle and business coach for individuals looking to create their most luxe legacies. I'm here to spill the tea on life, death, legacy, and everything in between. In this podcast, we're not afraid to get a little messy. Hey, Bless Babes. Today's special guest is Victoria Strong, an intuitive brand designer and creative oracle living in Phoenix, Arizona with her soulmate. She's a Libra Sun, Moon, Cancer Ascendant, and a Venus Virgo, a 6'2 profile manifesting generator, an experienced tarot reader, a free-form Italian-American folk witch, and a self-described lover girl. Victoria can be found in her colorful apartment, reading and journaling, or out around her city experiencing local art and food. She recently closed her first business, Liberato, which was a five-year project in designing, manufacturing, and distributing lunar ritual goods for neurodivergent babes. She is now synthesizing her experiences as a spiritual business owner, a freelance graphic artist, and an intuitive to create deeply connective and effective brand experiences. Her design method combines collaborative rituals, divination, and a modern art direction to build breathtaking brands customers are obsessed with. Hello and welcome to the Messy Medium Podcast. I'm Tara and today I am joined by Tori Strong. I am so excited to have this conversation with a fellow spiritual entrepreneur. Um, Hi, hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. So excited to be here. This is the first time I've ever been interviewed on a podcast. Oh my god, really? Yeah, (laughs) it's a big deal. I'm so happy it's me. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Oh my gosh. Well, we're going to start easy. I'm going to start with the question of the week, which is, what mantra or quote is currently on your mind? All right, so I thought about this one. And the one that pops up and has been popping up for months now is if I'm breathing, I'm successful. <laughs> and wow. The the bar is low. <laughs> I honestly, is it? <laughs> wow. No, but like for real. Yeah. But you know, how much goes into breathing? A lot. But it yeah. seems like such a simple thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I frequently find myself uh, like a little cut off from my breathing, like like it's a little shallow and not quite yeah. there. And um, so, yeah, so it's kind of like twofold. Number one is like I don't have to like do anything insane to like achieve success or validate mm-hmm. myself. I can just yeah. breathe and be and that's enough, but also like a reminder to reconnect with my breath. Yeah. That's interesting that you say that because I recent I saw like a TikTok or something about like like <gasps> type of breathing um, mm-hmm. to like really engage yourself like in the morning and do it like morning, noon, and night. Okay, and like I started yeah. doing it, and I do feel like energized. And it's just breath work. Yeah, yeah, breath it's work is wild. insane. Yeah, I mean it makes sense because it's like, and um, it's like what's keeping us alive, right? But like. Right. <laughs> But actually diving into breathwork and, like, learning more about it, yeah, you know, it's pretty insane, like, the way you can, like, flood your body with oxygen and just, like, I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of breathing. <laughs> I think most of us are. <laughs> For me, this is, mine kind of is, like, along the same thread of, like, seems simple but like isn't actually that simple Mm -hmm. and I think I've probably said it like on the podcast before or somewhere like on the internet which is I'm everything and I am nothing Ooh. because sometimes especially I feel like so much is going on in the world that Mm -hmm. you're like oh my god like I'm like involved in everything but then you think about like the world and like outer space it's like we don't even matter so it's I think I kind of use it as like a coping when I'm trying to get like overwhelmed by things I'm like I'm actually nothing which seems kind of depressing like are you okay but it's like no it's like I don't know like that thought brings me peace yeah it's perspective right yeah yeah now perspective you've had a big change in like your perspective 
on a lot of things and you recently closed your business. I yes, you. I did. Yeah. It, it's been an insane year of change. Yeah. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, like, try not to be too too dramatic. <laughs> it's just me and my it's little business. It's like a business. part of you. It absolutely was. And honestly, I didn't think anybody understood how much my business meant to me and how big of a part of me it was until I closed. And I got so many messages validating that people people saw me and saw what I was doing and, and did understand, like, um, yeah. what a loss it was, you know? Yeah, and I think it's got to be, it's more intense because this is, like, an intuitive business. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, there's that whole other level to, like, the work that you were doing and, like, still are doing. Mm -hmm. So, like, what was that, that extra layer like? Yeah, it was, it was crazy because I, I mean, this has been up to this point, up until I closed it, it was my whole career. And I had believed that if you had an idea that aligned with who you are and who you're meant to be, and you like stayed in alignment and you stayed in touch with your intuition and you tried really hard, that you could not fail. And that turned out not to be true for me. And so I had to change this like fundamental belief I had about how the world works. It was... Um, wow. yeah, kind of like, um, I don't know. Yeah. Growing up a little in that way. Oh, that's in, and like, I always, I'm like alignment, 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 but you're like, no, actually like I aligned myself so hard and it still didn't work. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, I, I still believe that like alignment will bring me success. Um, yeah. In like a, like a longer term, term. lifetime kind of way. Um, but I really thought it applied to this project. I was really, I was really building this project to be my entire career and to be like most of, I wanted it to last like most of my lifetime, you know? Right. Right. Now, like intuition is, this is an intuitive business, but did you like, know? like what, what, what was the moment you're like, oh no, like this is, this is it. Like this isn't. Yeah. So uh, I, <laughs> it would have been cool if it was like just like a sudden realization like while I was yeah. meditating or something but what right. happened was it was not consistently doing well for like several months and um at this point I'd been doing it for like close to five years and I was like okay I've been working too hard and too long with um too little reciprocation too little like yeah income um I'm gonna give it the next six months I'm gonna like pour everything I have into it I'm gonna figure out what I can do to make this work I'm gonna do my absolute best and if at the end of six months I can't make it work then I will lovingly close it and just days maybe if maybe a week or two after I made this decision Ammon my partner lost his job and oh no <laughs> and we were both freelance so he he lost his like one big main client um and we'd had a couple rocky freelance months previous which just happens when you're both freelance and so him losing his job was like a big deal and right. I couldn't afford to run Liberato for the next six months. Like I, I couldn't take on the expense yeah. and and lack of income anymore because I, I didn't have that safety net from him, and so I very suddenly had to be like, nope, never mind. It's right now. It's it's ending now, and it wow. was re- it was really jarring because, I mean, it was five years of hard work, like I said, that I had been setting up to support me, my family, my future family, hopefully a couple employees for a long time. And then suddenly I was forced to liquidate for just like the low, low price of scraping by. Wow. It hurt. (laughs) I bet. Yeah, no, it's like not easy 
and it's like so much change like not just like now you're not going like the only one going through this you know it's like now your partner's like well no actually like huge change for me too yeah it was it i think was it's intense. interesting wow yeah damn yeah. You guys are so strong. Like, that is, like, so wild. <laughs> I know you guys don't feel that. Like, if, if, you that me, me. <laughs> if you had seen me. If you had Like, crying on the floor. <laughs> Sometimes it's good, though. Like, huh? Those are, like, character development moments. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. They are. They absolutely are. My character is developed against my will. <laughs> Um, there were like a few months in the summer there where um, it it was it seemed like we were probably gonna have to like we weren't gonna make rent we were gonna have to leave our right. apartment and break our lease. Um, luckily, we both have parents who are like super supportive, and we started making yeah. plans with family to make space for us in their homes. Um, but it, it was it was a grieving process. It was it was yeah really hard. Now what? Now you kind of gone through it. I know you're still like healing. Mm-hmm. It's still like oh, fresh. Yeah. No, they, but, like, I'm I'm out of the hardest part now. <laughs> yeah, we're not necessarily crying on the floor as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe still on an occasion. <laughs> but what advice would you offer someone who is like approaching the position or, or is in the position of like ending their own intuitive business or project? Mm-hmm. I would say. Like, absolutely coddle yourself. Like, surround yourself with so much comfort. If if it is feeling like a grieving process, which it was for me. Um, yeah. I just, like, I all the time wanted, like, the only shows I wanted to watch were cartoons, which is not usually my thing. I wanted to be a blanket all the time. I wanted more, longer, hotter showers and... I just like craved so much comfort because my my like waking reality was so deeply uncomfortable and I think yeah. I had some shame about that or I was like no I need to like be a big girl and like get up and make it work right and there's no reason you can't get up and make it work in pajamas <laughs> you know <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> yes so yeah, yes. that's what I would say is like allow yourself whatever comfort you can. It's like you, a hundred percent, can be a grown up and also, like, not at the same time. Like at the absolutely, same time, absolutely, absolutely, totally agree. <laughs> and like honestly, sometimes you get more done that way. And like that whole time you mm-hmm. had been a grown up, you had run a business for five years. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely coddled yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was putting in like. Mm, multiple multiple job applications a day but I was giving myself crap about it because I was doing it from the couch so what else are you gonna do with different this this it's gonna be submitted from the couch yeah, or from your desk absolutely like, absolutely it is like why not offer yourself a little softness right and people I think also like when you're looking for a job it's like that is like a full-time like position especially when you're like against the wire like it has to happen (laughs) right (laughs) right yeah Yeah. that's like also a lot of responsibility so if cartoons need to be in the background that is Mm -hmm. fine (laughs) yep you gotta do what you gotta do now how like ritual it's very important Mm -hmm. um if people follow you on social media they know like crucial to like who you are yeah. How did you use like ritual in like running your business? So much. <laughs> so um, much everything. <laughs> I I made rituals out of everything that had to be done in the business. And that's not to say that I was like constantly like in this ethereal little goddess space, like always meditating and surrounded by crystals, but <laughs> Whenever I could bring an element of spirituality into things that you have to do for your business anyway, like um, quarterly bookkeeping and content planning, I would, you know, for 
for my bookkeeping, I would bring my pyrite and I would bring my money mantras and I would light a candle yeah. and, and, um, yeah. And then for, for things like content creation and like, um, branding and customer visioning for those things, I, I would, I would try to like, um, I would bring my amethyst and I would be trying to to visualize and to like really tap into the energy of the people that I was serving um I just it's just a lot more authentic to who I am as a person yeah. to integrate a little magic into the practical things that I have to do like if I have to work if if I have to make money and and I, I do actually enjoy working and making money a lot, but uh, if I if I have to like be consistent and do these things like taxes and whatever, then I'm gonna be a little witch about it, you know? Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> do you, a little, it's like a buffer, like. Yeah. Do I? Do Do you do that in your business too? Um, I just, I'm sure I do, like on a subconscious mm-hmm. level, but I feel like yes like just as a whole just like my existence well, I yeah at, at, at least whole... at this point is uh-huh. like spiritual like yeah because I'm a spiritual entrepreneur and like that's work for me um and like even when I'm like working with clients like that's legacy building which is yeah still like exactly spiritual work so it's just uh-huh it's literally like the thread through like who I am mm-hmm. um yeah. as a person and I definitely think, see, here's the thing, though, with me and that, like, and, that, and like that. So, like, the harder stuff, you know, the not-so-fun stuff, like, taxes mm-hmm. and, like, yeah, all of that. Sometimes if I lean too much into, like, my spirituality, I'm like, oh, it'll be, like, it will be taken care <laughs> of. Like, this will all work out. <laughs> and, like, sometimes I do find myself using it to kind of, like, be a scapegoat. And like literally, as I started saying that, my ring ear started ringing. So they're like, "Yeah, like, <laughs> like, correct, ma'am." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, realization. Um, yeah, I. Like, it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, it is more fun. I feel like a lot of us maybe fall into this where, where we're like, "That's all I need is the spiritual side." Yeah, <laughs> and it, yes. like kind of in a way it is, but yeah, it's especially when you're like interacting with something so practical as business I feel like there is a balance to be found but like you said like if your business is part of your life's mission then anything you do working on your business is like a ritual it is like a drop in the bucket of who you are right right now how important I mean obviously this is be like duh when I ask you this question but like how important do you think it is to have these rituals? Um, very important to who I am as a person. If I didn't do them, I would, I mean, what would I do? Like, if I wasn't tapping into my intuition, if I wasn't accessing my own wisdom, I would have to be outsourcing all of that to someone yeah. else, to like what marketing bros on the internet. <laughs> no, and, no. But to, like it, okay, I can either use my intuition I can use astrology I can use like universal laws that have been around for thousands of years or I right. can use like what's going on with the algorithm today that won't be the same tomorrow tomorrow like, it's just it's right. just not sustainable to like yeah. make my decisions from any other place that's such a, like, yeah, it, literally. <laughs> and you know what else? Even, like, just, like, I think we're talking about ritual from, like, a very, like, metaphysical, like, woo-woo kind of mm-hmm. place. But, like, still, like, marketing bros, they still, like, get their coffee every day. Like, that's an mm-hmm. intention. Mm-hmm. Like, you're still yeah. doing that, rit- like, ritualistically every day. You're yeah. still, like, logging in. You're still doing your like docking your time a certain way you're still sorting your product like those are still rituals like that you are doing daily yeah they are I think everybody's doing them and just once you like 
wake up to the idea that you are and you infuse yeah. a tiny bit of meaning into them where like if you think like if you're already going to get your coffee every day and then you think okay this is my wake up ritual this is my get into work mode ritual then right. suddenly it's so much more effective and it has so much more meaning it's right. magic it's magic you're still doing magic <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Which is the what I love about girls magic. are out here doing magic. <laughs> right. Well, that's kind of scary. Totally scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, this also like speaks to like the cycles of like rest and creativity, which is like something you had mentioned to me. Um, how would you like? I know what I think you mean by this, but I like. How would you best like describe that to someone who's like never heard that concept before? Yeah, so I feel like in this capitalist environment, we are, whether you work like a traditional office job or you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter, you are expected to have constant output. And that's just not how the world works. <laughs> if you like, if you like look at a tree, it has... It has like a fruiting, a blossoming season. It's gonna right. shed its leaves. It's gonna take a nap. And it's got these cycles that we can learn from. And in the cycles, the kind of like broader cycle that I always try to follow is like like a, a visioning, dreaming stage, a creation stage, a release stage when you're like putting it out into the world. And then a celebration stage and a rest stage. And I feel like this dreaming stage gets skipped a lot. Um, the celebration step probably gets skipped the most. And yep. and the and the rest stage is like also very very skipped and, and very underappreciated. Yeah. And so especially when you're like working on your own, I think it's really important to like look at Every time you put out a project, every time you release a product, um, to like kind of look back and, and check those things off and make sure you're actually you're actually um, giving yourself a time to like recuperate and and following a more natural pattern, a more natural rhythm of creation and release, so that you can yeah. keep it up because everybody's all burnt out because we're just constantly in the creation and release creation and release yeah I I think that I mean personally I know that there are th like major things I need to have to celebrate even just from this year mm -hmm. have not and like That's I keep saying one. to myself like oh I'm gonna celebrate this or I'm gonna be like so, and I just like keep not doing it I also think people don't know how to rest Mm hmm Yeah, I agree like, with that. That is like that is something like we as a society have just like nope, like, okay, you had like your bereavement period or like you've had your mm -hmm. like time off period. Like we do not know how to chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not a taught we skill. Don't. And it's hard to know if you're no. like doing it effectively, especially if you don't have practice. Right. And and also sometimes I we just don't have the opportunity. Like, like when right. I closed my business, in some ways I got to rest, and in others I didn't because I had to be, I had to be up looking for jobs, looking for ways to make it work. And so, it, like, I, I do want to yeah. know that, like, the world is not built around the idea that we can have these cycles, um, and it's kind of up to us to to fit them in, to do them in the best way that we yeah. can. Right, right. And also, I mean, we're just skipping it right now, like the dream phase. Like we just, we want to celebration and rest. But like mm -hmm. that time where you like allow yourself to like wonder and like wander in your thoughts. Yeah. Does not happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's such a magical part. It's, I don't know, it's my favorite part of the creation process is before you it, even start having like too much practical editing on your ideas is just to like yeah mm -hmm. wander wander and dream and think about like what is the biggest version like if I had unlimited resources what would this idea look like it's it's so fun and dreamy and I think we're 
we're much too quick to start putting parameters on ourselves and just start like getting to the work. Yeah. When it needs time to develop. Yeah. You said practical editing on like mm. your ideas and I was like, mm. oh my God, like that <laughs> is it because I 110% do that. Like I'll start mm. to like have like an idea and it's like yeah. edit it edit it yeah it's like when it's just meant to be boundless but I like immediately start yeah. to edit things about it yeah I mean there, there is like there is like a phase in creation where you do need to start like thinking like okay how can I do right. this with the time and resources I have at my disposal but it's not the first time you have the idea I don't think no <laughs> moments after I initially had yeah, it, I'm like, well, I think that's, and then you just start, like, marking it. Yeah, yeah I think we all do that, I, and I think it's yeah, just, like, an so impatience good. to get to the creation stage, honestly. Yeah, yeah, because I like you, I like to work, I like to make money, so you're, like, as soon as you have an idea, and you know it's a good idea, mm -hmm. you're, like, all right, how do we get into production? Like, mm -hmm. what do we yeah. do? <laughs> like, especially if you're someone who had, like, you have more skills than I do, like, in terms of, like, like actually like creating like design like and stuff graphic like that design. but it's like like yeah but like when even when you have like skills like I can like start planning things out like I'm a pretty good planner I immediately like want to go into like that space because I know how to mm -hmm. and like I want to make yeah. sense of something like through that it's comfortable. which is like great to have those skills but mm -hmm. also sometimes it's like to your detriment because you already just start editing it and like trying to fit it into like the certain dimensions like that it can exist in that plane mm -hmm. yeah yeah now how have you like learned to embrace these cycles um just through practice i feel i think the the ideas first started forming when i i was having like difficulty with my period it was like inconsistent and painful and I was trying to figure figure out ways I could support myself in my like in my hormonal cycles and the idea right. was introduced to me that if I were to rest more during my period then I would have more energy during the rest of my cycle and my following period might be less painful so yes. um I started trying that and it felt like a very natural move to start doing it with moon cycles as well. And, right. and then I just, because of the way that I am became obsessed and cycles have leaked into like every, uh, every aspect <laughs> of my life. I'm yeah. obsessed with them. I have like, um, I have like a yearly cycle. It's like my own kind of wheel of the year. And then I yeah. have like right here above my desk, I have the hero's journey cycle and I have my moon clock where I track the moon right. cycles. I'm just, I am all the time, all the time thinking about what, what cycle I am, like what part of what cycle right. I'm in, in every aspect. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's just a part of who I am now. It's one of my interests. Literally, when I think of you, I think of the moon. Wow. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, I have actualized. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I like picture, like, you know, like a crescent moon. I picture like a crescent moon and like a fairy sitting on the moon, but the fairy is you. Like, if I go Shut closer, up. like, zoom in, it's you. It's you. I want so badly to be sitting on a little crescent moon all the time. <laughs> literally we need to make that photo shoot happen for you oh my gosh i'm writing that down yes yeah very photo do shoot it. sitting on the moon i like see it so i've never clearly. i've never felt so seen as i do right now Terry. yeah good i'm so happy to provide that to you. <laughs> like in my mind like it's just like this perfect like mo like you like moment like it's just so nice that's so beautiful <sighs> yeah i Definitely, I have ritual. I'm trying to get better at rituals. Now I have a lot of rituals, like in my own like personal like practice of like craft and stuff. But in like business, I'm trying to really hard to incorporate moon cycles into the business, um, or even like my own moon cycle into mm -hmm. the business because I'm just like if 
there are like a number of days during like my time that I need to chill. Mm-hmm. I need to chill. Yeah. And like, I need to not shame myself for like not being able to sit at my desk or like if work needs to get done, but it has to get done from like the couch or the bed, like that's mm-hmm. fine. Um, for some reason it's like, even though, cause we both entrepreneur, like freelance, like work for a majority of our careers. It's like, for some reason still, even though there's nobody in this room, but like us, it's like, Oh, I'm not at a desk. And for some reason that like pressure, but it's like, nobody's yeah. going to know if you type this email from like yeah. your bed or from the desk. like nobody knows. Yeah. It's just the, <laughs> the like stupid, lame patriarchal concepts of work. is just nice. so deeply ingrained. And if you think like it took us a lifetime of seeing like, the, that imagery, the imagery of a person at a desk in a suit at a cubicle, yeah. and and that that's been our concept of work. Like, I I feel it's just gonna take some time to like unlearn that. Yeah. And it yeah it doesn't seem to matter how often I prove to myself that resting does make me more productive, resting does make me more creative, and resting makes me happier yeah. and a more fulfilled person. I still right. occasionally when I'm resting just have that little underlying creepy feeling of like right get up you're not a real entrepreneur you're like like not wanting right people to see the way I work because of their perceptions of how work should look it's all it's all sticky and weird yeah do you think that that is like perpetuated by social media Oh, like, yeah, even absolutely. if you're following, like, female entrepreneurs and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's no, so, so performative. Yeah. And there's lots of female entrepreneurs who a- adhere to the, like, the traditional view of work and entrepreneurship. And and they're actually the ones who inspired me originally to become an entrepreneur because I was right. coming of age when Instagram was invented and women mm-hmm. were very visibly creating creative careers for themselves where they were getting paid a lot and they were visible and beautiful. Yeah. And I was like, I want to be part of that. Um, right. And, and there, I mean, there's pros and cons to, to having right having role models and and one of those is yeah like um I have a little bit of girl boss culture like ingrained in me because that's yeah, same. what I looked up to you know right I I know that's like the death of the girl boss like mm-hmm. that was like trending like earlier this year and I was like mm-hmm. yeah because like definitely has hurt me and helped me yeah. At different points in this journey. Yeah. yeah. It's like on on one hand, like, yeah, definitely death to the idea that you have to like hustle and be putting out content and like yeah. be perfect and beautiful and rich in order to be like a valid human yeah. being or to consider yourself successful. But also successful, like, yeah. Let's also like not diminish the fact that like women built industries off of social media and like literally the the concept of the girl boss is just like a woman who is in touch with her girlhood and her creativity and is making money and Mm -hmm. that's cool like let's keep some of that you know (laughs) right right it's just like the evolution it's like another wave of like feminism like taking what we've learned Mm -hmm. from like past generations and like exactly what are we gonna do differently like you learn from your mom so, like, I'm going to do things that she did. I'm also going to not do things that she did. It's exactly. It's, like, the same concept. Yeah. Like, I'm grateful for the work the girl bosses did, and I'm ready for entrepreneurship to look different for us young female entrepreneurs. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, entrepreneurship, because, like, that is who you are. What are you currently working on? What would you like to promote? <laughs> I... I'm coming out of my cave. <laughs> um, I am creating something new. Um, as we're recording this, tomorrow is my launch date. So this is really fun timing for me. We love um, this. I am also like full moon. I see you. Uh, yeah, I'm the eclipse, which if I'm understanding the astrology correctly, and I meant to look this up before I got on your podcast because I know you know. 
a lot about all that. Um, I believe this eclipse season started when Ammon lost his job. And and is wow. or, or or something some some kind of cycle that started that day yeah. is is ending tomorrow so yeah. i was like okay that that little season was my depressed broke ass bitch season and now it's over yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway i haven't even said oh. what i'm launching um i'm launching my design services so um i i learned wow. graphic design out of necessity because I couldn't afford a graphic designer when I was running Liberato and then I started picking up freelance jobs to like supplement Liberato and it was always just a lot easier it was a lot easier than my product-based business and so I want to lean into that ease I want to lean into what I'm naturally good at um I'm already partially booked I haven't launched yet um so yeah all new design services I'm gonna be branding I'm gonna be helping people make their businesses beautiful and effective and I get to use everything I learned from Liberato in that and I feel like I'm synthesizing all the past five years of learning and it just yeah ah! <laughs> I'm just really excited I Love it. I love it for you, especially because I'm someone who has, like, benefited from your creativity and your branding, because, like, so I know all my branding is done by Tori. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> BT Dubs, like, I'm kind of partial because I'm in love with, like, what you created for me, so I cannot wait to see what you create for, like, other people. Me too. Like, your so your branding is what remains one of my favorites to date of projects that I got to do. <laughs> Happy to hear it. <laughs> and it, it was so fun. I remember when, when you booked me, you said you had an idea for the color palette based on your astrological chart. And yeah. that was the first time I got to do that. I have since had like a couple opportunities to use um, astrology and numerology and branding, but that was the first time I really got to do it. And I think it came out so beautifully. And I just find it yeah. so fun to combine design because I'm a Libra stellium. So I'm a little hooked on aesthetics and beauty and it is yes. not a shallow thing for me it is deep <laughs> and being able to incorporate yeah. magic into it just makes it better it just makes it more fun and more effective I definitely because like when I launched like my feed like with the website that you created like my feed was definitely for like a little while like various that like more aesthetic mm -hmm. um than it had been and then since then like you know content creation is like hard to keep up on oh my so gosh. like things have not been as aesthetically like oh it's aligned as they were for like a period and I'm already I'm like I have got to like realign here because I was so it is not it's not a shallow thing I was happier yeah. when I knew it looked yeah like exactly like what I'm trying to communicate yeah expression is yeah. important especially in a brand online because there's just so much noise so much content people are looking at every day and they have to know immediately when they look at it that it's meant for them and it's something that's going to be yeah. valuable to them that being said content creation is a full-time job like yeah companies have at least people. one employee full-time yeah. creating content yeah. so it's it's not um it's not always like super realistic as a solopreneur to expect yeah. yourself to be able to keep up with that aesthetic unless you have like yeah. support from contractors or design templates or something like that. To, yeah. To it's, ease the I've been the one person at a job, like at a company, like trying to do, I'm like, oh and I'm like, gosh. you, before I left, I was like, we need someone else. Like I cannot yeah. do this all. And they're like, it's just social media. It is not. Just not just social media. media. It is so like I was social like, oh, media do not is, do not is like it's like a whole second realm. It's like people live half their lives in yeah. the real world and half their lives on social media. Some people more, some people less, but it's like it's like, an entire legal. other dimension where your business has to exist. Shit. It's not Literally. auxiliary, it's not just like what marketing yeah. used to be. It's uh, it's crazy. It's crazy how much the world has changed since we were like teenagers. You just low key blew my mind when you said it's a whole other dimension. 
Isn't like, it though? What? Like we're literally <laughs> traveling to a different dimension all like constantly throughout the day. You're logging in, you're going to another dimension. Yeah. I never even thought about it like that. Oh yeah. Wow. And they're taking it to a whole other level with this. I don't even know if this is taking off. I can't tell, but the like metaverse situation. I think <laughs> I don't know if I think metaverse we're gonna like look back on as like the clunky beginning mm-hmm. um of like AI and like existing in like an artificial like in those yeah, types you're of so like right. world. But yeah. like we'll look back and be like this was like the the first like bicycle of version of it, like <laughs> what were they doing? Mm-hmm. Or like the first flight, like they crashed in a field. <laughs> like yeah. but that's yeah, I, but do, so, so so you see us you see us like fully like walking around in the metaverse. I definitely for a few see years. something like that happening. Interesting enough, the first guest that I had, we talked about like AI a little bit too. It like just like keeps coming up in like mm, conversations, yeah. but it's like gonna be such a big like it's already such a big thing and like being utilized and like yeah. it's very like on the cusp of like like Aquarius and stuff yeah. is like mm-hmm. it's so new technology. Those things are oh, yeah. it's very interesting. I I and find it very fascinating. We're gonna live through it. Yeah, it's a really interesting time not only to be alive but to be a digital creator, and to be kind of reconciling yeah. the ethics, the utility, just yeah the, the concepts that yeah. Yeah, AI is super interesting to me. I haven't, I haven't found any ways that it like super supports me in my work yet, but it is something yeah. I'm exploring. I think that even like I don't know if you use like Magic Expand on photos or like. Oh sure, yeah. I guess you're right. Maybe. I do. I do use. I use so, some like, of the like. They have like in. In some of the Adobe programs, they have, like, beta AI features that I have used. And actually, on your website, there is um, a photo you gave me that I expanded using AI. You're right. You're right. So I am using it. It's it's kind of hit or miss, and it's not, like, fully integrated into my business, but I am using it. Yeah. It's interesting. It's, like, trickling in to different Mm -hmm. things. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Now, I have a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unless you want to finish your thought first. I can't remember it. No, that's okay. Oh, no. You're like me. I'm goldfish brain. Yeah. I'm like, couldn't tell you. (laughs) It's gone. It's lost forever. Do you want to talk about, like, your tarot and, like, integrating, like, that in business and stuff, too? I would love to. Yeah. Um, So, I in like part of my soft launch for this new chapter of my business, I've launched live one-on-one tarot readings um, specifically for business creators because that's just one of my interests and it's who's following me and it's fun to read. And it's probably one of the things I most often read for myself. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I've been I've been reading for almost four years now um, and, you know, have done wow. readings for friends and I did like a couple little like email based paid reading lunches and or yeah, paid readings. And now now I get to do it in like, I don't know, I feel like a legitimate psychic now because I'm offering the the one-on-one reading I would say yeah not not as powerful as you but um it it is fun and and it's absolutely not but um yeah I've had a few readings and they've gone really well and I'm having a lot of fun with it and it's really nice not to hide the like magical yeah. part of myself but to uh, integrate it yeah. into my business I'm so excited for you I was like I hope she talks about this because like I think it's such a like great thing for you I think it's so aligned and like I'm just like so excited for you and like even the way you, you promoted it when like in the rainbow online mm-hmm. when you post you first posted about it I was like well first of all rainbows are like such a big sign for me like those are like one of my mm-hmm. top ones and then just the way you like used that I was like 
it's so authentic and it's just like so my magical fairy sitting on the crescent moon like that <laughs> is so you i was like yes thank this you is it. Yes. yes i've never felt more expressed in my content than i do right now i think it's just that it's just that like starting a new project that you're excited about energy you know when you're like getting yeah. ideas and you can't sleep and you're like living and breathing it but it's yeah really special to talk about it on your podcast because when you did a reading for me it was yeah. I think the first time anybody like read my cards for me or or maybe it was like my first like psychic mediumship reading I can't remember but it was like wow it was a first reading of its kind and it was super insightful and like undeniably psychic and powerful me for me at the time and like the notes that I took off that session yeah. I lived off of for months afterwards like it continued to be a theme in my life for months afterwards and it was yeah and that's, that makes me so like I like oh, you I need to, I need to hear that stuff like people don't yeah. realize like you'll you know but like in yeah. general like your readers your spiritual squad like we need to hear stuff like that like even if it's like a quick like hey just let, like, let you know like things are still like coming to fruition or like you were right like months yeah. later because we're just like yeah. okay I just said all this stuff to you <laughs> like yeah bye. yeah like wondering if they like immediately forgot or like discounted right. anything you said yeah yeah no yeah. It, it continued to be very powerful and that's the kind of reading like I aspire to give and hope I can someday and yeah and yeah it's just so powerful and it can change so much when you have somebody yeah. else's eyes on what you're going through and, yeah. and somebody else reading into the energy as well. Super helpful. Yeah, totally. Now, what social handles can everyone find you at? You can find me at Victoria Strong Designs on Instagram. My website is also victoriastrongdesigns.com to be released tomorrow. Will be released when this episode is out. Yeah. So exciting. Yay! Yes! So excited. I hope everyone books you for Toro. Taro, Toro. <laughs> and all their design needs. Listen, I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Taro when Tori is reading your cards. Toro, Toro? Yes, it's called Toro. <laughs> I think I wanted to say Oracle and Taro because I'm so used to saying like Oracle readings. And um, it's just like my brain just like doesn't know the difference anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for joining and until next time stay blessed babes thanks for tuning into the messy medium podcast if you liked today's episode don't forget to subscribe and follow wherever you're listening from you can find me the messy medium on all social media platforms under the handle tara cecilia if you'd like to book an intuitive reading, consult session, or explore my coaching containers, please find the direct link to those services and more in the show notes. Until next time, stay blessed, babes.